Good afternoon, dear friends of chemistry. Uh, I would like to introduce you a little bit one topic, how we can use light for driving new chemical reactions. Uh, as probably you know, uh, every, every structure can absorb energy of light at, and after absorption of this light, it enters excited state. And what is interesting, we can have different excited state, single or triplet state, but regardless of which excited state it is. Important for us is the aspect that uh, reactivity of compound in excited states is completely different comparing with the ground state. And that's what we use in chemistry. Uh, one, I think, very known example is isomerization of double bond, which is not allowed in ground state due to high energy barrier, but it's allowed when the compound is irradiated with, for example, UV light. The next example is that if molecule which is in an excited state react with another one and it can transfer an, an electron to this molecule by uh, electron transfer or energy by energy transfer. From the point of view of energy, it is in fact a situation when we put energy of light into the system and by this way, we can overcome energetic barrier, which can be high in ground state. So this is the new barrier. Thus, we can uh, make the reaction much faster. Or we can even overcome the barrier in the case of endergonic reactions. And this is the case, for example, of photosynthesis, which is known. Uh, one important aspect of uh, photochemistry is that uh, almost all organic molecules absorb light in UV region. The problem is that uh, for UV region chemistry, so to use UV light, we need the source of this light, which is not uh, advantageous for laboratories. And I think the most general, more general problem is the fact that photon in UV light is of relatively high energy, which is comparable with energy of CH bond, CCL bond, or C, uh, C bromine bond. And after absorption of light, the molecule can be destroyed by such a light. And thus, the reactions under UV light irradiations are usually not selective. What we can do, we can, go, we can have any molecule, which is called photocatalyst or photomediator, which absorbs a light of lower energy, uh, advantage advantageously in, in a visible region. And this molecule, after absorption of energy, can transfer electron or energy to the molecule which does not absorb in this visible region. And then we can observe formation of very, very reactive particles as a radicals which can further react with another molecule to, to produce a product which we would like to prepare. Or we can also use the energy transfer for this type of reactions. And this is advantageous for us because we can use sources of visible light for this type of chemistry as we do also in our laboratory. Uh, reactions uh, occurs under mild generations of reactive intermediates. Thus, they are selective, and we can use also common black glasses. And this type of chemistry is called photoredox catalysis, is, is known, uh, and uh, there are a lot of different types of photocatalysts on the world. But we use this type, which is derived from vitamin B2, riboflavin, and it's called uh, flavines, and uh, flavines are known also from the nature as uh, very uh, photoactive compounds. And this is what, what we can use in our reaction to move new reactions, which are not possible to, uh, to proceed in, in the dark. And uh, what is important, flavines are very strong oxidizing or reducing agents and even better upon excitation. So we use the flavines in redox chemistry. And this is one example. Uh, this is flavine in ground state. And you can see here on this 
redox potential, this is a reduction potential, that the, this flaviness, not so strong oxidizing agents to be able to oxidize these particles because the reaction is very, very endergonic. But, on the other hand, upon excitation, we receive the molecule in excited state, which is able to oxidize all these species, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and many others, uh, to produce this radical cation, and these particles can react further in our uh, mechanism. What we can do then? We can play around the structure of the flavine, for example, by introduction with uh, electron withdrawing group or this nitrogen, with this, which is quaternary, we can improve the potential, we can improve the ability of flavine to participate on oxidation processes, but still it's not enough to oxidize these species. But upon excitation by visible light, we, opt we obtain a very, very strong oxidizing agent. This is strong, similar as fluorine. And it can oxidize, for example, aromatic ring to this radical cation. And this cation can then react towards further reactions. Uh, so another example is to this 2 plus 2 cycle addition. When we also play around with the structure, we can have aloxazine structure in place of this original flavine. We can have carbon atom in place of this nitrogen atom in this position. So, Finally, we have different types of reactions. We can, uh, we can move by this process, different types of flavines. And, uh, of course, we expect that we will find uh, another reactions uh, catalyzed by light and flavines uh, with help of these uh, enthusiastic persons which are responsible for these results. Uh, this is the group today, my collaborators, uh, my co-workers, uh, also co-workers from other institutions and from, from abroad. And uh, this is uh, the last slide, so I would like to thank you for your attention.